What a week. I just got back from the 2024 Webflow Conf in San Francisco, and now I'm here to share my takeaways from the most exciting part of any tech event, the keynote. Webflow announced a ton of new things, but I'm gonna focus on only the ones that really stood out to me. First up, Webflow Analyze. While Google Analytics is super easy to add to any website, the community has been asking for basic analytics baked right into Webflow since 2017. I had a chance to check out the demo on the conference floor, and it's great to see basic analytic data now integrated directly into the Webflow UI. That said, this is just the first version, so it's not meant to replace Google Analytics or anything more advanced yet. One standout feature is that because it's built right into Webflow, it doesn't add cookies to users' devices. And as for exporting the data, the team is aware of the demand and is actively researching it. Pricing starts at $39 per month for 10,000 sessions across all site plans, and it'll be available sometime this month. And I'd love to know which of your clients would be interested in this premium add-on. Let me know in the comments. Next up, Webflow Optimize. We finally got a look at what the Webflow and Intellimize teams have been cooking up since the acquisition in April. And it's huge. A-B testing has also been on the community's wish list since 2017. Now, Webflow Optimize brings AI-powered multivariant testing. During the keynote, I was amazed at how the AI testing works. Let's say you wanted to try five headlines and five different images and five different calls to action. You've created 15 different things. AI Optimize is going to try all five times five times five, all 125 different possible combinations and do so exponentially faster than you could if you were doing traditional multivariate testing. It tests everything in the background and serves the winning variant to most of your traffic, but it doesn't stop there. If trends shift and another variant starts performing better, it'll adjust automatically. And creating variants is super simple. You can even test visibility changes, styles, not just text. Right now, you can't test moving elements to different areas of a page, but it's something that they're working on. Webflow Optimize is available now starting at $380 a month. But I'm really glad that this add-on model isn't just for enterprise plans. It's great for smaller agencies like mine, thatonecouple.com, to add more value to future clients without needing a massive enterprise budget. Now, let's talk about the AI section generator. This was the one product I was most skeptical about. In my predictions video, I wasn't sure how an AI feature would fit into Webflow, especially with tools like Reloom already helping the community. The demo showed a scenario where a team needed to quickly add a section due to a tight deadline, and Matthew was able to build it within seconds on stage. It looked cool, but I was still left with questions. So thankfully, I got to chat with the team at the demo booth, and they clarified, this is just the beginning. Right now, the AI can't build sections from a blank website. It pulls from existing projects using your existing content, classes, and variables to create what you need. It does its best not to duplicate class names, but it's not yet smart enough to pull from frameworks like Client First, Knockout, or Mast. But that's something they plan to tackle soon. Currently, it's free in limited beta, but it'll likely be a paid feature in the future. Next, a big step towards their new tagline, Build better together. Hmm, that sounds awfully familiar. Webflow now has three modes, build, edit, and design, which make it easier for teams to collaborate in real time. In design mode, designers and developers do what they've always done, building layouts, components, CMS structures, etc. Edit mode allows content teams to update text and images, just like we're used to, but build mode is where things get interesting. Marketing teams can drag components into page slots and make edits to elements in real time. From what I understand, changes in edit and build modes happen in real time, but changes in design mode might not yet sync immediately. If they can make everything real time across all these modes, 
that would be a huge step forward. And a few smaller updates worth mentioning. CMS single item publishing is no longer blocked by site-wide publishes stuck on staging. This means that content teams can push live CMS items without waiting. And this feature should be available this year. CMS nesting limits are getting a boost. Currently, you can only nest one collection list within another, but they're promising more flexibility by the end of the year. CMS sliders or improvements to the core component was discussed during the exec AMA, but no concrete details came about from that discussion. Just a response that they are working on backend improvements for something that will solve this. But for now, we are expected to continue using third-party scripts or Webflow apps. And lastly, the biggest mic drop of the event. Free play DDR at the after party. Okay, just kidding. Webflow acquired GSAP. This is a huge win for Webflow and the community. Webflow interactions are what put Webflow on the map. They let designers create rich animations without coding, bringing back that old Adobe Flash feeling. Now with GSAP, the possibilities are kind of endless. Right now, people like the famous Joseph Berry are using GSAP through custom code, but soon we'll be able to create smooth animations like him without touching a line of code. Considering about 30% of the sites on awards.com are built on Webflow, and around 70% use GSAP, this move is massive. No release date yet, but if the timeline is anything like the Intellimize release, we could see this in just a few months. I'm personally hoping for some UI changes in Webflow Interactions 3, like a horizontal timeline for animations. So fingers crossed. I know there were some other announcements, but these are the ones that really stood out to me. So let me know your thoughts on this year's Webflow Conf keynote in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. And as always, thanks for making the web beautiful together. See ya.